Hello everyone, my name is Ninua and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn Part XI. Today we are going to focus almost entirely on the MSQ as we are going to do a full mini arc that will take us to level 20 and which sees us investigate a mystery in Sunalan. And believe me, by the end of this video, things will have heated up quite a bit. And that sound you just heard is all the players who already know the story, collectively face palming at that terrible joke. <laughs> Still, we will encounter a new type of instance, so that's pretty sweet. A quick warning now regarding spoilers. As I mentioned in part 9, the main scenario quest that comes right after completing Copper Bell Mines changes the dynamic of the MSQ moving forward. So, if you care about spoilers and have not played to that point, I suggest you pause this video now and do so. You can watch part 10 as it is about side quests only, so it's spoiler free, but in this video I will only warn about major spoilers to the resolution of the mini arc and scenes with more far-reaching meaning with respect to the main story. And now, with all that out of the way, let's go! And so you saw me look at my journal to realize we have to return to Vespa Bay to pick up the MSQ where we left it. And for that I'm going to use a chocobo porter. Because while we have those etherite tickets, we only have a few of those. We cannot buy them anywhere, so I'm keeping them for longer distances, basically. So, as you can hear by default, the music that plays when we are riding a chocobo is this. If you want to switch it off, and generally switch it off, mount music, you can do so in the system configuration, as you just saw me do here. So you might remember I told you about this storage room in Vespa Bay in the Waking Sands with different people coming and going and they will have different things to tell you depending on where you're at with the MSQ. Well, I'm going to visit them right now, starting with Ishtola standing outside. Our organization 
The science of the seventh dawn was formed through the union of two separate entities. The first was comprised of Shalayan natives such as myself and was called the circle of knowing. The second, made up of individuals that share your rare gift, was known as the path of the twelve. The terrible events that ushered in the seventh umbral era taught us that only together may we stand against the evil that seeks to consume us. Don't mind me, lass. I'm just here to deliver a shipment. Now, where shall I tell them to put it? The robberies and disappearances? The Amalja are the most likely culprit, wouldn't you agree? Then again, this is an Alan. One cannot discount the possibility that moneyed interests are involved. They say that those of us who have seen the dream are chosen, that we have within us the seed of greatness, that we could be heroes. Even me, an Alamigan half-breed, cast out when his mother could no longer stand the sight of him, a half-breed who once took to banditry just to eat. Aye. I'm sure just brimming with heroic potential. <laughs> so this boy has galley and blood in him. Can't say I'm surprised. Everyone knows what happens when the city is sacked, even if the bards choose to omit that part. But Aranvald shouldn't be pitied. Boys like him have a clean slate, an opportunity to write their own story, free of the ties that bind the common man. Why don't any of these blokes know who I am? I swear I was one of them scions of the Seventh Stone. Only we didn't have such a fancy name back then. And the headquarters was in a far more convenient location. At least I think it was. Or is my mind playing tricks on me? God, what's wrong with me? Why can't I remember it more clearly? Seven waning moons see seven suns rise. Divine order rolls, fallen corpses rise. Thus the divine chronicles seek to warn us once more. The meaning of these words now shines clear. They evoke the dire circumstances of this imperiled age. The realm doth shudder and twist, and the dawn lieth cowering beneath the stifling blanket of night. And we abide who await the coming of the unborn era's seed, the light which shall pierce the glowering darkness. While there are others who possess the echo, none of our near as strong as you with a power, hence our extremely high expectations of you. This place is called the Waking Sand and it's our headquarters. It used to be somewhere else, you know, but then a bunch of things happened and we ended up here instead. Thanks, Ida. That's, that was very helpful. <laughs> a bunch of things happened. Well, that was pretty spoiler-free. Ready to begin, are we? That's the spirit. So then, your mission is to investigate a crystal robbery and a spate of abductions. Crimes which we believe to be connected. Assuming we are correct, it is like that any discoveries we make in relation to one will further our understanding of the other. Now, since the attack on the caravan, our friends at Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern have doubled security over all their shipments. In light of this, it is my judgment that the abductions should be our priority. According to our preliminary findings, the majority of the missing were last seen in the vicinity of Camp Drybone, so that would seem a fine place to begin. A fellow by the name of Isambard serves as the camp's de facto leader. Pay him a visit and see that he gives us his full cooperation. Yes, sir. And what will you be doing in the meantime? Hmm. 
Okay, so let's exit the waking sound. All right, our destination Camp Dry Bone isn't exactly <laughs> near. It's at the other end of the land, basically. So I considered using a Chocobo Porter, but decided against it because I mixed up the routes taken by the Chocobos between different Chocobo keeps. So I'm teleporting to Horizon, but that's going to be fruitless. Yep. Probably the fastest here is to go on foot. There will be an etherite at Camp Dry Bone, so and a Chocobo Keeper, obviously. So we can unlock those when we arrive and then we can travel a bit faster. But here I have to cross Western Salan, west to east, and again Central Thunderland, west to east. So, enjoy the scenery! So thankfully between the exit to Western Sunderland and the one to Eastern Sunderland, it's pretty much a straight line in Central Sunderland. So at least there is that. So actually it's not that long. And here, as you can see, there is an etherite and a chocobo keep. So I'm going to unlock both because they can be useful to shorten the travel time. And now I am continuing onwards to Camp Drybone. And we finally reached Eastern Sunderland. And thankfully, Camp Dry Bone is quite near to the exit. We can already see it here in the distance. And the gate is really nearby.
Come dry bone also having both a chocobo keep and an etherite makes it a convenient hub for this part of the story, actually. Alright, and with that done, let's talk to Isambard. Hi, I'm Isambard. Here to search for the missing folk, I take it? Minfilia sent word that an adventurer fitting your description would be along. She also warned us to be wary of the Almaja. It seems we know who the culprits are, at the very least. Now, I bear no official title at this camp, but the people here have come to look to me for leadership. You have my word that I will do all I can to help see the victims safely returned. And this concludes the quest. For reminder, the rewards are 6,240 points of experience, 203 gil, and a glamour dispeller, which you now know what it is, since my previous video. Level 17. Unsolved Mystery. Isambard of Camp Drybone is seeking help to solve a mystery of missing persons. The rewards are 6,240 points of experience and 235 gil. Let us get right to it then. Minfilia names the Amalja culprits in all this. You would do well to investigate them first. Much harm has been levied on these lands by Amalja hands. The flames burn where they might, but their light cannot stay the darkness, in all places, at all times. There have been brutal murders of callers at the church of St. Adama Landama, innocents wishing no more than to pay their respects to the dead. The poor souls deserve a proper burial. I would see to the deed before mongrels catch their scent, but I know not if the Amalja still linger. Would you secure the remains for me, friend? You will find them on the eastern road. Twelve willing, you may even come to learn something of what the Almaja seek in this area. And we have to go to a point south southeast from Come Dry Bone can see on the map highlighted in orange ripe corpses I love that they have to specify <laughs> thanks game thanks a lot for the mental image also, look what we found! Because we've heard a lot about them already, but because I did my first 14 levels in Guidania, I had not met them yet. And now we are going to interact with them, meaning we are going to retrieve all three corpses. And Unfortunately, this is not the last time we are going to do this, and every time the question remains How can we carry several people like that? <laughs> this poor soul appears to have been ravaged by an Malja before sitting to rot for several turns of the sun. Again, what a lovely mental image. Thank you, game. It is good to see you returned. Were you able to secure the remains of our fallen? But I love that they use the flower as a symbol. With the bodies given back proper to the earth, the souls will find their way across to the other side. You have done a noble deed this day. I thank you. 
Now then, what of the Almaja? Did you see any? Surely such massive monstrosities as they cannot conceal their presence, much less take their quarry unawares. Ah, so there were a Malja remaining after all. I feared as much. Their part in the lowborn disappearing is all but confirmed, but I sense there is more to this than meets the eye. The occasional Malja raiding party would not account for people going missing in these kinds of numbers. The total is too great, and the questions too many. It would not surprise me in the least to learn of another hand in this. But whose? Countless travelers pass through Drybone every day, and even if it were among them, how would be we best discover who may be implicit in these vanishings? And after this quest, we have a lot more questions than we have answers, I fear. Level 18. What poor people think. Isambard aims to turn his investigation to the common folk. The rewards are 6,480 points of experience, 209 gil, and a choice between a goatskin pot helmet for Disciples of War, level 18, a brass circlet, Sunstone for all classes, level 18. Or two elegant bronze pieces for a total of 200 gil. What say we turn a knight to the common folk themselves? It may be among them that we find the reasons for these vanishings. Twelve forbid it be so. There is a merchant by the name of Ungust, who was born here in Drybone and grew up in the Golden Bazaar. A rough character, but he knows the people here better than anyone else. I'd wager he's at the inn, quaffing away the day's earnings. Here, I'll write a note for you to show him, else he's not like to speak to you. When he says rough, <laughs> well, you're going to um, understand in a few seconds. I'd remind you there's no brawling in the pub, but you don't seem the listening type. <laughs> well, gods be damned, you're that bloody adventurer who threatened me back in Ulda. What in the seven hells do you want with me now? I'm happy to see you again too. No, I'm joking. Dear friend, missing people, please help. <laughs> Yours isn't bad. Folk around here are as wary as they come. They'll turn tail and run if you so much as pass wind nearby. Play them all for fools and cox some hard labor out of them I did. If anything, they're even more timid than before, what with all the disappearances. You can go talk to them yourself if you don't believe me. So let's speak with three of the common folk. Please, miss, just leave me be. I've nothing to say but this. Thal, Tex, who, or whatever's been feeding off us low folk. Fair enough. What do you want from me? I don't know anything, I swear. Please don't kill me. Whoa, where did that come from? And unexpectedly, Angus was right. <laughs> oh, poor man. He's going to be out there for a long time. Just as I told you, wasn't it? A whole lot of them are terrified. Uh, there's been talk of folk getting abducted, but if you ask me, they simply up and moved on to a better place. This place isn't exactly Costa del Sol, if you know what I'm saying. Costa del Sol is actually a location in La Nocea, which uh, the MSQ will take us to in a about 10 levels from now, a bit more than 10 levels. But he's right. 
and you see what he means by that when we get there. Welcome back, Ninoa. Have you learned aught of import? I see. I suppose I should have expected as much from Ungust. Well, another thought occurred to me in your absence. The common folk are nothing if not fervent in their religious beliefs. Perhaps if they speak freely to their gods, then the clergy may know something of use. Level 18. A proper burial. Isambard would like you to learn what you can from the clergy. The rewards are 6,480 points of experience and a choice between a cotton acton for disciples of war level 18, an altered cotton dalmatica for all classes level 18, and five elegant silver pieces for a total of 2,500 gil, which here in this case is really worth consideration. If we would know what the common folk speak to of to their gods, we've no better place to ask than at the church of St. Adama Landama. It is a small and humble church found to the northwest of here. And so long as you are headed there, but I ask you to deliver this embalmed corpse. A morbid request I grant you, but it must be born to burial, and I trust none more than you to see it done. Seek out a man named Marques. He tends to the graves of the lichyard. He will tell you where the body is to be interred. The church of St. Adama Landama is just a little bit northwest, so it's close by. We can already see it. And again, we're carrying a corpse. <laughs> but just the one this time. And we've already found Marcus. I am Marcus, yes. A body? Of course. There, there have been so many bodies of late. Uh, I apologize, miss. If you seek a place of burial, then there is an empty grave atop the ridge. Take the path and lay him to rest there. Wait, you're not going to do it? Also, I have a feeling he's not telling us everything. So here we have to interact twice. The first time to deposit the body and then another time to bury it. Don't leave after the first interaction or you'll have to come back up here. And this is such a pretty spot, um, especially at night, because this formation in the background becomes illuminated. It's just so peaceful and pretty. I love this place so much. And now we have to talk to Marcus again. May they all walk in Saul's realm. What? Missing people? I, I'm afraid I cannot help you. Are you sure about that? Because it's the second time he's stuttering, so um, it's a bit weird. But maybe Sister Orson can. She has been kind to me. Everyone, everyone has been so kind. Or maybe not, because he sounds more like lost right now. I don't know why, though I... Pardon me, you will find Sister Orsen within the church walls. And I'm just going to say what I told myself the first time I played that quest. What an incredibly detailed NPC for a guy we just meet in a quest in Leech Yard. Well done, Square Enix, I guess. Also, I still think he had more to tell us, so I'm going to go back and talk 
try to talk to him again. It's all wrong. I, I should have. There's something he's not telling us. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Anyways, time to go talk to Sister Olsen at the church. Oh, what a cute carbuncle. I hear you have done us the service of burying a fallen soul. Please accept our gratitude and extend it to Isambard when next you see him. Hmm? You seek knowledge of missing drybone inhabitants? It is true I am closer to the people than any other of the order. I confide in them and they in me. When they wish to speak to their keeper, Thal, I am the medium through which they do. Should I learn anything pertinent, I would be sure to share the information with you. Oh, I only wish Marquez would be more helpful in the matter. I pray he did nothing to offend. He saw terrible things during the calamity. His scars run deep indeed. He seems to now prefer the company of the dead over the living. Well, it does explain why he seemed rather disturbed and, you know, unable to finish a sentence. <laughs> I mean, if he has PTSD, it can explain a lot of things. I love how this game also regularly makes references to that side of the war that, which is not heroic, which is not pretty, which is not, you know, cinematic. Um, there are a lot of references to PTSD again, to uh, rape, unfortunately, um, things like that. And it's good that they do. It's good that they do because people sometimes in video games like that kind of forget that these things are not nearly as pretty as games made them out to be. While tragic, I fear such behavior ill befits the church. I received word not long ago that one of our recent visitors, a man called Thangred, uh -oh, I believe, took offense at his conduct. I must have words with Marques and soon. I mean, again, if he has PTSD and you as a church, you kind of, shouldn't you kind of not judge him? Although I understand what she's saying because it's n probably not very healthy to live like that. But at the same time, there's probably not a lot of help for people living with that kind of trauma. It's all a bit sad, really. So now let's conclude the quest by talking to Isambard again. I wonder what he told Sancred, by the way. Because Sancred doesn't seem like somebody who gets easily offended. Thank you, Ninua. A burial is no easy thing, even when the departed is a stranger. Were you able to learn aught of the missing common folk? Well, not really. You've been keeping yourself rather busy of late, haven't you, Ninua? Well, speaking of the devil. A pleasure, my dear Isambard. The name is Sankred, and I share a passion with you and our mutual friend here for learning what has become of these missing persons and why. I too spoke with Angust. More times than I care to count. I feel you there. There seems to be some truth to this notion of the common folk speaking their secrets only to those in service to the gods. Prostration, prayer, penance, abject deeds done behind closed doors, away from prying eyes. Who better to take the pierce unawares than she who takes confession? The good sister Olsen herself. What? Are you okay? Olsen? She wouldn't. She couldn't. Even the most beautiful roses have thorns, my friend. And you would be wise to keep an eye to this rose. Still the lich keeper, Marcus. 
I'd swear to the twelve, I've seen that face elsewhere before. Oh, so he's back. <laughs> he's back into the suspects, I guess. Level 19 for the children. Isambard is concerned about the questions surrounding Sister Orsen's integrity. The rewards are 6720 points of experience, 250 gil, and a choice between cotton trousers for Disciples of War, level 17, cotton breeches for classes, level 19, or Alagan bronze pieces for a total of 400 gil. By the way, quick note, all those pieces at level 17, 18, 19 are actually weaker than the ones we got either from the whole of the novice or from the dungeons we ran through earlier. Sister Orsen? It cannot be. Though she is wont to travel to the Golden Bazaar on her own, and it is not uncommon to see her speaking to the children, but no, it could not be she, could it? Oh, I grow wary of these suspicions. I know there is one child in particular that she is fond of. Pray seek out the boy, Ninua, and see if you cannot glean something from him about Osan's activities. Alright, and the Golden Bazaar is a hamlet we haven't visited yet, which is further north, all the way northwest. There is actually a way to travel by Chocobo. There's a Chocobo portal service between the two locations, but we'll have to unlock it by going to the Golden Bazaar for the first time. I'm probably going to clear that fate simply because I don't want the music to play during the quest. So I'm going to switch to Lancer. And get started. Bazaar Blood Triangle. The unit of Almaja raiders has forced its way into the Golden Bazaar in search of sleeves and supplies. Aids the brass blades stationed in the hamlet in fending off the attackers. And as you see, there is a chocobo keep down there as well. Let's get rid of these first. One thing that annoys me so much in these fates where we have NPCs like the flame privates here coming to help is that like here, you come when the fate has already started for a while so some of them are badly wounded, i.e. they have very low HP remaining. So you try to grab all the aggro and everything to avoid for them to die and they really get out of their way to get killed. This is so frustrating. Thankfully I was able to uh, prevent it here. But sometimes you just cannot do anything about it. It's just so annoying. And again. And we are done. 
and it seems like we've already found the child. Please help! Sister Usan went out all on her own and hasn't come back. She always reads to me right here about Thal and the Order and the other side. I told her I lost my shiny thing and she went looking for it. But what if the monsters outside hurt her? Please find her. So either she's really in danger or we're gonna find some shady stuff. Well, looks like she's really in danger. Well, there is some shady stuff ongoing, but not her own, uh, it seems. Rotting pikeman and rotting mage. Hmm. How oh, not delightful. Thankfully, they're easily defeated. You... you are the one from the church. Thank goodness you arrived when you did. It seems my gratitude is yours yet again. You spoke with a child. Yes, well, I was able to find his lost trinket. It is a ring given him by his mother before she passed. I will see it safely back to him. She was out in the wilds to look for a ring a poor child had lost. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound too nefarious to me, <laughs> but, you know. Oh, she's, she's a really good actress. So now I'm going to take the porter back to uh, Camp Drybone. It's gonna go a little bit faster. Sister Orsen was attacked outside the Golden Bazaar? Gods for Fend. I will secure a room at the inn for her, should she require any rest. Searching for the mementos of orphans? And risking her own well-being in the doing no less? Certainly not the dastardly deeds Thankred would have us believe. Well, again, you never know, but... It is quite doubtful indeed. Level 19, Almerja Wrong Places. Isambard seems to have a message for you from Thancred. The rewards are 6720 points of experience, 238 gil, and a choice between goatskin leggings for disciples of war level 17, padded leather duck bills for all classes level 18, or an elegant silver piece for 500 gil. I am well glad I reserved that in room for Sister Olsen. It seems she received greater injuries from her attackers than she initially let on. Thankfully, she is expected to make a full recovery. But now on to the matter at hand. Sankred came looking for you once more. He left word that he will be waiting at the Almaja encampment to the southeast. I pray the two of you are able to uncover some evidence regarding these uh, disappearances. Oh, 
hope so too, because <laughs> so far we have not much going on. Well, nothing at all. Because even the Almaja, we don't really have any evidence beyond the fact that they are around. Now, one thing about this area of Eastern Thunderland, so dry bone, this plain in particular, is that it is teeming with one beast in particular that people will regularly come to farm for a very good reason. And this is the one. The Myotragus Nanny. And there's, there are also Neotragus Billy. And one of their drop is this, the Algot Skin. Algot Skin can be used to make Algot Leather. So it's going to be the leather that's going to dominate uh, crafting between level 16 to level um, almost 30. And this is a great way to create yourself a regular income by selling the skins is already pretty good, but especially if you can craft leather. Leather requires another item to tan the hide, but it is also found here in this area. So you can gather both at the same time, basically. Ah, there you are, Ninoa. So good of you to come. Indeed, I've heard all about good sister Orson. It's about said her wounds were serious. It would seem my suspicions about the poor Rose were misplaced. It would seem so indeed. But false though they were, perhaps my suspicions were not entirely without merit. Whilst following sister Orson near the Golden Bazaar, a bound of Almajar caught my eye. I tracked them as far as this encampment, but, well, let us say that I would much prefer to keep my distance and remain here. This, of course, brings me to why I requested you, dear Ninua. Would you be so kind as to take a look inside? Oh, please. Aren't you supposed to be people who do this incredible stuff, dangerous stuff? And you can't even go inside an encampment where enemies are only level 18? Seriously? Oh. I mean, yes, it's difficult to go in unless you're lucky. It's difficult to go in with nobody noticing you, but it's not exactly as if they are that dangerous. I mean, I barely get a scratch and it's already over. And here I'm going to grab the queer leaflet. <laughs> now, this reminds me, I think it was under another video with which was playing through the same quest. And there were people remarking that they were kind of confused for why <laughs> a leaflet would be queer. Because nowadays it's true that you hear that word mostly to refer to people with a sexuality other than the social norm, uh, which is going to be heterosexuality in most cultures. Um, but in reality, queer means something that is strange, odd, which doesn't follow the norm, basically. So hence the use that we make now. But um, <laughs> Yeah, if you read, you know, uh, literature from the 19th century or even before that, you, you will have seen queer in a much more broader sense. Well, did anything tickle your fancy? Yeah, it's a queer leaflet. <laughs> this leaflet, 
sees a wealth of gold into the hands of your children? It looks to be some sort of assembly to provide the poor with work. The lettering, though, atrocious. Sancred is a graphic designer, oh my god. At his bit about Nold Thal and seems somewhat less than studied, I find it hard to believe one among the order penned it. Pray take this to the inn at Camp Drybone. Let us see what Sister Orson makes of it. Let's. <laughs> yeah, but the lettering. <laughs> I mean that lettering remark this is a, this is totally something that a graf graphic designer would say So we won't be looking for Isambard this time. We have to find the inn. Which is going to be one of these doors. I think the last one, probably. And in one of these rooms. Come, listen closely. Can you hear that beating? It is a flow of ether, the very pulse of the land. Truly, Eosea is a realm of endless wonders every day. My heart is set aflutter with a new discovery. Now, let us see what Sister Orson makes of this leaflet. Let's... My savior comes again. To what do I owe the honor this day? What is this? Blasphemous! These are not our teachings at all. This was not made by any true brother or sister of the order. Of that, I can assure you. Come to think of it, weeks ago, the church was plagued by missing garments. Could someone be posing as a priest of the order to deceive the people? Now that's an idea. The plot thickens, Ninoa. Our culprit pretends to be a priest to lend credence to his deception. There is no doubt an irony in there somewhere. <laughs> Probably. But I suspect we have a worthy adversary on our hands. I shall consider how best to handle this. For now, tell Isambard what we have learned here. Posing as a priest to think. These troubling notions aside, it is gratifying to finally be able to move this investigation forward. Thank you once again, Ninoa. I shall keep my ears and eyes open, now more than ever. To be fair, Sankred said the plot thickens, but actually we know more than we did until that very moment, so. Level 19, Dressed to Deceive. Isambard wants to help you identify and apprehend the false priest. The rewards are 6,720 points of experience and 453 gil. I'm afraid I have not seen any unusual activity. Nor have any of at this camp given me cause to doubt them. But unless we can identify the culprit, and soon more innocence will fall victim. Do not despair just yet, my friend. An idea occurs to me. Our suspect has been posing as a priest, using leaflets bearing false promises to lure the poor. Let Ninua and me serve like by with like by posing as impoverished souls in need of succor. Ah, I dare to hope that this will yield us the answers we seek. It will be a dangerous undertaking, but you two are more than capable of looking after yourselves. I'm next to useless in a battle, but I can supply the garments for the disguise. These old tunics and slopes should serve your needs 
so long as you don't mind the smell and the stains. This will serve very well. You have my thanks. Listen, Ninoa, so as to lay the foundation for our little ploy, we must make it widely known that more vagrants have arrived at camp and are desperate for coin. To this end, I want you to don the old garments Isambard has lent us and beg for work around the camp. Before long, the false priest should catch wind and approach us. What do you mean by stints? On reflection, actually, you know what? Don't tell me. I'd rather stay ignorant. Okay, so, as you can see, we have now a number of red icons around the camp. The reason for that is that if you speak in your regular gear, people will talk to you as an adventurer. You need to change to the gear that was placed in your inventory. Y there are just two pieces, the body and the legs. And suddenly, and you are another refugee by the looks of you. The immortal flames have neither work nor kind for your like. Begun and see to it, you don't make a nuisance of yourself. And we have to find four more charming people like that. Well, actually, this one isn't so bad. I preach the teachings of Asema, the warden. Has to come to partake of the honey of her wisdom? As Emma is keeper of the sun and goddess of inquiry, all is laid bare beneath the light of her divine countenance. Open the heart to this light needy child, and thou shall want for naught till the end of days. It's not here, is it? Nope. It's next door, if I remember properly. Oh, yes, my favorite. Greetings, good madame. Is there aught I might assist you with? Oh, I don't believe there is. I'm afraid our wares are very expensive. Mayhap you should rejoin your fellows out at the pond north of Sandgate. This always reminds me of that scene in Pretty Woman. <laughs> and then you can return as an adventurer and ask her, are you working on commission? And I was about to get to the good part. Looking for work, you say? Sorry, but we don't have any openings. Now get out of here so I can finish my story. Last one, and uh, last one is actually somewhere above. Here. What is it? Gods, not again! Look, being poor doesn't give you the right to pester whomsoever you like. Why don't you keep with your own kind out by that muddy pond of yours at Drybone? Charming. You have quite a knack for being a nuisance, Nina. The camp is a buzz. We talk of newly arrived vagrants. And though we were unable to attract our wayward transgressor, we were able to learn that the poor have a commune by the pond north of Sandgate, to the east of here. The eyes of the authorities do not reach that place, rather ideal for spiriting away hapless souls. Let us go there and wait for the kindly priest to come and offer us aid and comfort. Needless to say, you'll need to remain in disguise. Well, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> you will need to return to your disguise uh, once you get there. As you can see again, uh, the, um, the icon is red. But you can travel in your regular gear. There's no problem with that.
and now we need to put our disguise on again. A fine morning to, for catching false priests, don't you think? You look absolutely smashing, Ninoa. Positively dressed for deception. All that's left then is to wait for our quarry to appear. Oh. oh, you poor unfortunate souls. This is no way for men to leave. No, no way at all. At least we know it's a guy. Who are you? What do you want? Be at ease, child, for I mean you no harm. I am a priest of the Order of Nord Tal, and I come to offer you succor. This leaflet bears the teachings of Nald. Trust to them and they will surely set you free from the shackles of penury. Hmm. A tempting offer, but I'm afraid I must decline. On account of that atrocious performance, you would have made a god's awful murmur ungust. What? How did you know? I, you bastards tricked me! Pot kettle black? <laughs> You're the one who is saying that? Are you for real? Please don't hurt me. I was only doing it to protect my people. Is that so? Do continue. Very well. I'm a man of the Golden Bazaar, raised there, if not born. Some moors ago, the Almaja raids began. They would appear sudden as a sunstorm and plunder and pillage at will. Our defenders couldn't stand against them, few as they were. Everyone lived in fear. I wanted to save my people, but being a merchant was all I knew. And so I did the only thing a merchant could. I approached the Almaja in hopes of brokering a deal. In return for sparing the Golden Bazaar, they made demands. Outrageous ones. Demands of what kind, pray tell? First of all, they wanted the schedule for crystal shipments from the Nanawa mines. For this, I bribed one of the workers to leak me the information. Next, they wanted me to bring them people. So I posed as a priest to lure in the vulnerable and give them over to the Almaja. I, I didn't have a choice. Protecting one's home is a noble thing, but at the cost of innocence? You could have sought the aid of the immortal flames, yet you did not. I suspect you're not telling me the full story. What made you sell out your own people? Speak! It was good. What did you say? The coin was good, I said. I could sell more meat for a score of lifetimes and not see even a fraction of what the Almaja pay me. You sacrificed innocence so that you could line your own pockets? Words fail to express the contempt I feel for you. Spare me your contempt if you want to blame someone for the mess we are the world's in, then blame yourselves or the gods. Not you again! Why is the one licking the mortal flame's petrol roots to the enemy as well? Spit it out. No, I know nothing about that, I swear it. At this stage, I'm rather disinclined to believe aught that leave your mouth. But no matter, there will be time enough to learn the truth. <laughs> oh, that sniveling... Oh. You know, be a dear and take word of these developments to mean failure, would you? I shall prize everything I can out of this filth. The abductees are still somewhere out there. Our foremost priority is to rescue them. So, um, we could go all the way back there on foot or use a netherite to get closer and um, then finish on foot or on chocobo's back 
But the quickest way, since we are pretty far away from Vespa Bay, would be to use one of the Etherite tickets. I think that's as good a time as any to do that. Also, just so you know, we will receive some more later on. So there is that. You you will not be limited to 12. We will have some more further down the line. Probably better if I changed. Again, we don't know what kind of stain we have on this, so... Not a great look. Ninua, how goes it? All's well here, at least on the bookkeeping front anyway. I wonder... yeah. Ishtola is still outside, which means that everybody still has the same dialogue if you go talk to them in the storage area. So I won't. Welcome back, Ninua. I am pleased that you and Sankrad have been getting along. I see. You have done well to uncover the truth. My thanks for the report. As Sankrad said, we must ascertain where the abducted were taken. And none but the Almaja know the answer. Suffice it to say they will not willingly part with this information. I fear blood will be spilled before all is said and done. Level 19. Life, materia and everything. Minfilia would like you to meet a distinguished individual. The rewards are 6,720 points of experience, 215 gil, and a level 18 weapon coffer. Weapon coffer are items that go into your inventory upon usage. It will give you one weapon between level 18 and 21 in this particular case for whatever job you open it with. Though we seek a peaceful solution to the primal problem, we must needs be ready to fight for our cause. That you might take to the field suitably prepared, I would have you meet with a goblin acquaintance of mine. His name is Metamix Bubblypots, and he is a scholar of no small repute. Metamix is renowned for having introduced a revolutionary method of enhancing equipment to Eorzea. The knowledge of this method was once a closely guarded secret, but thanks to Mutamix and his students, it has now been disseminated to the great benefit of all the realm. It would serve you well to acquire an understanding of the process. For this purpose, I shall lend you a blade. Take this to Mutamix and bid him use it to demonstrate his craft to you. Mutamix is ever to be found at his camp in central Thanalan, a place known as the Bonfire. Look for a pillar of smoke and the way will become clear. And again, Ishtola is still outside. So that part hasn't changed yet. So, as Minfilia said, the bonfire is located in central Thanalan all the way northeast. So, here I'm going to uh, Simply go to Horizon. And then continue on foot.
So you have a couple of other options. One is to return to Ulda. Let's go from there, but it's not going to be particularly faster. The other would be to travel to the Etherite in central Sunderland and then go from there. That would be the fastest way to go. But also the most expensive, obviously. And here we are, Vitamix Bubbly Pots. I love that name. Who is Aplunder come to test ring of Vitamix Bubbly Pots? This plain dagger has absolutely no defining characteristic, except that the hilt does smell quite nice. <laughs> Petitool drinks of airy self. When full of airy self, Petitool changes to stony shine, name of Materia. If Materia join with other fighty tool, then big eyes, fighty tool gains power of airy self. Metamix is reckoning that Aplanda is friend of Minfilia. Yes, tongue flaps rich ears of Mutamix with vastness. Minfilia wants a plunder to see power of Materia. A plunder brings fighty tool to Mutamix, yes? Fighty tool is unstrong as eating tool. Make good teach show of for power of Materia. It's Materia. Master. Now eyes of a plunder point at fighty tool, yes? But I join with fighty tool. Fighty tool gains power of Mataya. Fighty tool reborn. Here, a plunder takes fighty tool to Minfilia. Mataya, strictly speaking, is a kind of crystal. It is created by drawing out the etheric constituents from a piece of equipment and then crystallizing them. Not just any old equipment will serve, mind you. It must have sufficient spirit bond, that being a measure of how fully an item has been imbued with its owner's spirit. When you attach a piece of materia to gear, 
you imbue the host item with its power. That's how Master Mutamix to turn the dagger of yours or from somewhat as would struggle to cut stack into a weapon worth wielding. Uplander wishes to be joiner of Materia? Then Uplander best fill brain case with knowings of crafty making. With knowings of crafty making, Uplander can become joiner of Materia. If Uplander wants brain case to rattle with knowings of Materia, Uplander best trade tongue flaps with lonely ones of Mutamix. It requires a lot of attention to read through his text. But I enjoy trying to figure out what he really means. Okay, I'm going to pick up this quest here from Simbros. Swinbros, rather. Level 19, Forging the Spirit. Swinbros wishes to disseminate secrets of Materia creation. The rewards are 1680 points of experience, grade 1 dark matter, and the materia extraction ability. What would you say if I told you that inanimate objects can possess a soul? They can, believe it or not, although the soul in question is that of is not their own but that of their owner. Through faithful service. The arms and armor that we use come to hold our spiritual energy, thus to reform a spirit bond with them. This spiritual energy can be drawn out and converted into materia, a special kind of crystal that can be attached to gear to enhance their properties. I am well versed in the ways of materia extraction. If you wish to learn more about the process, it would be my pleasure to teach you. You are ready to commence your learning? Good. As you will have gathered by now, Materia is the crystallized form of one's spiritual energy. As this energy is derived from an individual's psyche, a volatile beast at the best of times, a degree of variance is to be expected in its production. In practice, that means that you won't know the exact properties of a stone until you cradle it in your hand. Now, Materia won't grant you much of anything on its own. Its power must be tapped, see, and this is achieved by melding it to gear. Know, though, that it takes a so deft hand of a craftsman to meld Materia. You can always seek others to attach Materia on your behalf, but you would sooner do it yourself. I recommend you speak with Phobas. Melding is her field of expertise. If you wish to remove materia from an item, highlight its icon and select Retrieve Materia. There is a chance that the materia will be salvaged. It's not just a chance, it will be salvaged as long as the spirit bond has 100%. You can now extract the materia from items. Materia extracted from one piece of gear can be affixed to another, improving its attributes. To extract materia from an item, you must f have first created a spirit bond with it by using the piece repeatedly in battle, crafting or gathering. Once an item's spirit bond reaches 100%, you will be able to select Extract Materia from the list of available subcommands. Once materia is extracted from an item, its spirit bond will be reduced to 1%. Affixing materia to an item can be done by a disciple of the hand with the proper training or by speaking with materia melder NPCs. Should you wish to remove materia, you may do so by highlighting it and selecting Retrieve Materia. And as you can see, Phobas has that quest for us which will unlock melding, but we need a crafter level 19 or above. I don't have one yet, so we will have to return for that, but I can extract materia already. So select an item with a spirit bond of 100%, subcommands, extract materia, and here you go. And I've extracted a heaven's eye one materia. The level of an item also plays a role in who can or cannot enhance a gear, requiring higher level crafters as the level of the item increases. 
If you lack the ability to meld your Mataya to an item, you may enlist the aid of other players or speak with a Mataya melder NPC. Another option is to find similar piece of armor with Mataya already attached. The markets are a perfect place to find specifically crafted items synthesized by disciples of the hand across Eosia. Another option is to find another PC to melt the Mataya for you. One way to do this is via the player search feature. Once you have found a PC capable of doing the meld and terms have been agreed upon, target the player and select request meld from the subcommands. Most likely though you will use NPCs to do that, because there are particular some across all the city-states at the markets and in some of the hamlets you'll come across. Now I'm just going to show you an easy way to identify items with 100% spirit bond. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, you have these little dots. As you can see right now, two are green. Everything else is white in the first two columns. The dots correspond to your pieces of gear that you are wearing and the white dots indicate that the spirit bond is at 100%. Otherwise, the dot will be green or red. Another way, of course, is to go to a piece of gear and look into its description for the spirit bond line and it will tell you what percentage it is at. So right now I'm extracting the materia everywhere and as soon as you've extracted materia, the spirit bond resets to uh, 1% but as soon as you use the gear again, it will increase once more towards 100%. So you can extract many pieces of materia from a single piece of gear potentially. Okay, and now it's time to return to Vesper Bay. I'm going to use a ticket for that because again, we are quite far. Just a quick note on Mataya. Um, there are different levels of Mataya and what level depends on the level of the gear you extract it from. So as you can see now, Nedric Ironheart has a quest for us but we will look into that in a couple of videos from now because this quest unlocks an optional dungeon Welcome back, Ninua. I trust your visit to the bonfire proved fruitful. Yep, a once ordinary dagger now made special with the wonders of materia. What a remarkable difference a single piece of materia can make. Granted, the skills needed to manipulate the substance are not easily acquired, but one need only look upon the results to realize such efforts are worthwhile. As I am sure you are aware, the quality of one's equipment can be the difference between victory and defeat. Mataya may well give you the edge you need, Ninua, so make it your ally. Now, it is time we discussed the matter of your next mission. Pray speak with me when you are ready to begin. Alright, and spoilers warning, this is going to be the culmination of this mini arc upcoming. So be aware of that before you watch any further. Also, there will be two cutscenes with larger implication for the general story of A Realm Reborn and I'll make specific spoiler warnings for those as well. So if you are bothered by that, please stop now and move to spoiler cut one. For the rest of us, let's go. Level 20, Lord of the Inferno. Minfilia would like you to assist the immortal flames. The rewards are 6,960 points of experience, 1,245 gil, 
and Dawn wrist guards, which are bracelets, accessories level, item level 18 for all classes, level 18. Word has arrived from Thankred concerning our ongoing investigation. It appears he was able to extract some information from our friend Ungust, the false priest. He revealed that he is due to meet with the Amalja to discuss their dealings. The mortal flames believe that the meeting will present an ideal opportunity to ambush and capture the Amalja responsible for the abductions, and so they mean to have Ungust attend as planned. As the Almaja are anticipated to offer fierce resistance, the Mortal Flames have requested our support. I would have you provide it to them, Ninua. Sankred is presently attending to another matter, but will join you as soon as he is able. Until such time as he does, you will be the science's sole representative on the ground. Before he left, he bade me tell you to save some for him. Such is his confidence in you. A confidence I share. When you have made ready, pray take yourself to Camp Drybone and report to the Flame Sergeant leading the mission. May you walk in the light of the crystal. And that concludes the parenthesis about Materia. You will see that the game insists about Materia because when you do the crafters, and even the gatherer's quest, at some point, we will be taught about it. Not in the same way, but there will be mention of Mataya aplenty. Which is fair, although... The thing about Mataya is, you don't really need it for your Disciples of War and Magic. At least not until much later into the game. But it will be helpful for your crafters much sooner. Anyways, returning to Camp Drybone to continue with the MSQ. So we need to report to the Flame Sergeant at Camp Drybone, who is going to be here. Ah, you are Nino Ayuzume of the Science. My thanks for coming, friend. We are stronger for your assistance. Allow me to brief you on our mission. Our objective is to capture Almaja and price from them the whereabouts of the abductees. The Lizardmen aren't aware that their man, Ungust, has been exposed. When they come to the rendezvous point to meet the traitor, will spring the trap. Owing to the clandestine nature of the mission, we can deploy only a small contingent. Every member must count, and so we requested the aid of the science. The rendezvous will take place at the Invisible City. Please make your way there and lie in wait. We stand to learn much and more of the Almaja plot if the mission succeeds, Ninoa. Let's make sure it does. And he has nothing else to say, so we are going to head straight for the Invisible City, which is located in the same corner as the Golden Bazaar, just a little bit further east. And so, if I look on the map, this is here where a fate is currently taking place.
Now, thankfully we are synced out of it so we won't be attacked by default but everything else could. Alright I'm looking for the rendezvous point which is going to be here. I'm going to preemptively defeat him to avoid any bad surprises. Calls commands battle for Lord of the Inferno. Is a bait in place? Our man is in position, sir. Good. We make our move as soon as the Almaja appear. Yes, sir. What is the meaning of this? Wait, something's amiss. Uh oh, looks like they came prepared. I guess it wasn't so much of a surprise then, was it? Oh, not him again. That's new. I'm afraid your little ambush ends here. I elude the immortal flames and scratches for moons before finally being caught. Did you not wonder how I managed it? It was almost as if someone was feeding him information from the inside. Ah, your every movement was known to me ahead of time. Now, as much as I'd love to chat a while, I have appointments to keep. They're all yours. Can we start by killing them first? And here's the arrow is going to come so much handy. I mean, Archer has weaker attacks than other DPS in this game, but being able to uh, AoE enemies down in cases such as these is priceless. I hate how here we are actually winning. I mean, if you look at it, we've defeated everybody else. 
and we can, you know, just focus on this one here. Unfortunately, now we still appear as the losers. That's so unfair. Put up your weapon, or your comrade's a dead man. To be fair, he's probably dead anyway. Behind you! A sleeping spell? Or paralyzing one? Bring her. The rest of you, march! Traitorous come. Alright, so that went well. Um, complete success. Let's talk to the flame sergeant and see where we are, because that's a sudden change in scenery. I fear the Almagi are mean to give us to their guard as an offering. If I must die, then let me die a soldier's death, with steel in hand. The Ball of Ember is now accessible, which is a new duty. The lizard men marched us to their stronghold. They are preparing for something, and I for one do not want to be around when they finish. It's fair enough. They're going to kill us, aren't they? God, I don't want to die. I want to go home. I hear you. Oh. But there are also a lot of civilians here, so I guess those are the people that were abducted. So if you look around, there doesn't seem to be any exit except for the entrance to the duty. But... Listen well, these waters feed into the marshes of dry bone. A short swim will see us to freedom. However, if all of us attempt to flee, we are likely to be discovered. You alone must sneak out and assemble a rescue party. Once you have won free, seek out our comrade stationed at dry bone. He will show you the way back here. Mr. Twelve, speed your way. So you can go out of here despite there being no obvious way out. However, you will not be able to assemble a rescue party. You have to come back in. It's just a way for you to be able to um, uh, exit if you want to upgrade your weapon, for instance, before attempting the duty. The lizards claim they will soon bring us before Ifrit for tempering. You're not seriously considering locking horns with the devil now, are you? Okay, and... Once inside the duty, there will be two cutscenes, one before, one after, um, which are going to play a pretty important role in the story. So, spoilers warning, if you haven't reached that point yet and want to avoid spoilers, please go to spoiler cut 2 in the chapters or jump straight to 1 hour 44 minutes 46 seconds when the duty battle actually starts. For everybody else, let's head in. Rejoice, heathen, for your worst life's lives shall soon have meaning. Okay, and for that place where I'm going to play with NPCs, because those two cutscenes I was telling you about last a pretty long time and otherwise everybody else will have to wait on me so it seems more considerate to go in with NPCs this time. So as you can see you have um, default NPC parties with random marauders, conjurer and thaumaturge. By random, I mean we. They are not characters we know and have met in this game. Lord in the Inferno, hearken to our plea. Lord of the Inferno, deliver us from our misery. Oh, 
mighty Ifrit, Lord of the Infernal, your humble servants beseech you, grace us with your divine presence. I quite like the design of Ifrit in uh, FF14, I have to say. Almighty oh, Ifrit, we bring before you ignorant savages who know not your godhead. If it please you, Lord, scorch their hidden souls your cleansing flame and mark them as your own. That doesn't sound good. Bloody hells. Bring those two as well. Oh! What's going on? This ain't what we agreed. None but servants of Lord Ifrit may behold the right of summoning. The souls of unbelievers are forfeit. No, spare me, I beg you. Pitiful children of man, by my breath I claim you. Arise once more as my loyal minions. Feed my flames with your, with your faith, and all who stand against us shall burn. I don't want to be claimed. Wait a minute, can't we discuss this first? Ouch. Oh, my tea, Fred. My one true God. Oh, no. Your words are my bread. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Impossible! By what sorcery do you resist my master's will? I don't know, but I'm glad I did. Could it be? Your soul already belongs to another. Yes, that is the only explanation. For sooth, thy frail mortal frame can serve as vessel to the blessing of but one, yet I smell not the taint of another upon thee. The truth of thine allegiance waxes clear, thou are of the godless blessed number. The paragons warned of thine abhorrent kind, thine existence is not to be suffered. I'm not sure this is sounding all the more better. Although, to be fair, I'd rather die free than live in servitude to that guy. Or anyone for that matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you your first trial. Which, to be fair, is an easy one to start you with. Against the mighty Ifrit. So, first things first. The tank wants to grab the aggro and turn Ifrit away from the rest of the party. So you typically want to do what the Marauder just did here. Displacement is fine. In harder content you may have to place the enemy at specific locations. But here it doesn't matter as much. You just saw Vulcan Burst mid-range AoE with minimal damage. But annoyingly, it pushes you away if you're caught in it, which may interrupt casting. And from now on, he will start using another AoE, a Ruption, that will appear under one of the players. Here we go. So as you can see, they're pretty large. The AoE marker is different from the one we've seen until now, so you have to be uh, attentive to that. Also, you have minimum time to step out of it, which is another reason to be focused here.
and this is all you will see until if it reaches 50% HP. Okay, so now pay attention to the area roughly between the Conjurer and the Thaumaturge. So right in Ifrit's back here. I sense the terrible power in that nail. He is speaking about the Inferno nail that just popped up here. This is your DPS check. Both the DPS and the healer must immediately focus down the nail. This DPS check poses no problem at all if you are with other players. With NPCs, especially as an archer, we are missing a bit of DPS power and sometimes it's possible that you will run out of time. If the nail is still there when Ifrin jumps away, his next attack, our fire, will kill everyone. Otherwise it deals important but manageable damage. Fortunately here we did we defeated the nail in time, so we were good. And we're going to resume as before until the end of the fight. There's just one new attack, Radiant Plume, this one. So you will see two different patterns of this attack. One covers the middle of the arena, the other one covers the fringes. And here my placement is going to be unfortunate because I'm going to be right in the middle of that next AoE. When that happens, you can hit sprint or make at least sure you avoid areas where circles overlap. I was on overlapping circles and so got twice the damage. But no matter because we are almost done. Major spoilers warning. If you want to avoid, stop the video, jump to spoiler card 3, or to the 1 hour, 53 minutes, 46 second mark. We've already seen one of those, haven't we? Pray forgive my lateness. I was delayed by a congregation of Amalja zealots. I swear, each seemed more evangelical than the last. <laughs> Persistent lot. Phew! I see the Bloodsworn wasted no time extracting the captives, no less than I would expect from the Flame General's hand-picked men. As for those two, it is fair to say their hardships have only just begun. They have much to answer for. I feel I owe you an apology, Ninua. Had I known this mission would prove so dangerous, I would never have left you to face it alone. You have been given a veritable baptism of fire. I see what you did there, Thancred. 
But let us continue this conversation in more agreeable surrounds. Come, dry bone, shall we say? This way, sir. So that was a mighty frit. Oh, we've seen him before. And what a disappointment he was. The readings are nowhere near that I had anticipated, even taking Uldar's interference into account. You should know better than to rely upon five-year-old data left by the Seventh Legion. Nor can we expect any form of support from the Motherland, given the troubles at court. We have only ourselves to rely upon. Ever the pessimist, my dear Livia. Promise me you'll never change. We've wasted enough time here. That matter of yours is too old to give any reading worth a damn. Not that there was aught worth a damn for it to read, but I take your point. I suppose we must content ourselves with the knowledge that we've achieved our primary objective. Yet I find that I am troubled by that adventurer's unexpected sure strength. Could such a foe prove a hindrance to our plans? Perhaps, but that is a consideration for another time. You have been given a task. That is your priority. I suggest you treat it as such. Fail to do as my lord commands? And I will spare him the trouble of punishing you. With allies like that. Beware a woman in love. I shall need to be on my best behavior. She does seem the type who loves to deal punishment as well. Alright, so there are no rewards for completing this trial, by the way. So you will find no coffer like you did in dungeon. The reward is, you are still alive and you can move the story forward. <laughs> Alright, so, I've just noticed looking at the bottom right corner of my screen that I have a white dot at the top of the first column. Which means my weapon has now 100% spirit bound and I can extract materia. So now to continue we have to talk to Thankred. Please note that the entire discussion that's going to follow until pretty much the end of this video is going to be about the aftermath of just what happened. So, spoiler warnings, if you haven't played till that point, please stop the video now and jump straight to the conclusion of the video. For the rest of us, let's go and talk to Thankred. Ah, there you are, Ninoa. Come, rest a while. You will have no better opportunity. After witnessing their gods' numerous defeat, the Anmaja will be less inclined to risk our wrath. For a time, at least. Now, where were we? Ah yes, I was in the process of apologizing. I do hope you can forgive me. I arrived too late to be of any use. To you, all the abductees. They may be whole of body, but the same cannot be said of their minds. For once a man is tempered. Ah, but it ill suits me to dwell on the negatives. Amidst all our misfortunes, there is still reason to rejoice. If it is slain, and by your hand, no less. That is a deed of no ordinary individual, Ninoa. Not that I ever thought you were ordinary. On the contrary, I have long suspected that you have the potential to shape the fate of this realm. What can I say? My fine eye for talent remains undeemed. 
Minfilia will be proud beyond all reckoning when she hears of your deed. I trust you shan't object to my bearing the tidings to her. That way I can claim to have contributed something to this mission. You, meanwhile, have earned yourself a rest. Take some time to relax and return to the waking sands when you are good and ready. We can discuss matters in more detail then. Just don't take too long, will you? The realm's problems won't solve themselves. So I'm just going to check in with Isambard. Not that you have to for the main story quests, but... With a fake priest apprehended, the people of Camp Drybone may go about their lives with easier hearts. You have my gratitude, friend. Time to use a Nesserite ticket and return to Vesper Bay. The triumphant hero returns. Thancred told us the news upon his arrival. He is presently in the solar, giving a full report to Lady Minfilia. You should join them at once. Lady Minfilia is most eager to see you. My late arrival nearly cost Ninua her life. I wasn't there when the Almaja took her prisoner. And I wasn't there when they served her to Ifrit. Yes, by some miracle she survived, but that does not excuse the fact that she should never have had to face such dangers alone. I failed her utterly. Just as I'm failing you all. What's done is done, Sancred. You can ill blame yourself for every. Anyway, it's so good to see you again. Impeccable timing, my friend. I have just finished regaling Minfilia with your heroic exploit. Sancred has told me everything. You have done well to return to us. The perils you faced were undeniably great, yet a part of me believes that I had no cause to fear. And now we can put paid to our long investigation. As we suspected, the Almaja undertook both the robbery and the abductions, with the aim of summoning the, their primal, Ifrit. Nor is this tale limited to Uldar. Similar incidents have been rife in both Limsa Laminsa and Gridania of late. I dare say you've been curious as to how these crimes are linked to the primals. Permit me to explain. Having manifested in the physical realm, Primals must consume ether if they are to maintain their presence here, and the stronger they become, the more ether they require. Now, ether exists throughout creation. It flows through all life and permeates the very air that we breathe. And as this alone will not suffice to sustain the likes of Ifrit, nay, he and his kind require a more concentrated source of ether, crystals. It is for this reason that incidents involving crystals can often be traced back to a primal. Which leaves us with the why of the abductions. To understand this, you must first understand how primals are born. When all is well with the world, primals possess no physical form. Their essence is dispersed across the great river of ether. However, when the world is plunged into chaos, those who worship the primals cry out to their gods for deliverance from suffering. This cry serves a beacon toward which a primal's essence is irresistibly drawn. It is this coming together 
or etheric coalescence, which grants the beings physical form. Once born, a primal gains strength from its followers' worship. The more numerous and fervent they are, the more powerful their god becomes. But the primals are seldom satisfied with such reverence as their adherents freely give, and in order to gain more power, they do not scruple to create followers. They do this by tempering mortals, a process to which you yourself were subjected. Yet even as Ifrit took your comrades in his thrall, you alone remained unaffected. This is thanks to the power you possess, the Echo. We know not the why of it, but those blessed with the Echo are immune to primal influence. It is as though a greater power protects us. When first you came to us, I told you that the Echo would be instrumental in dealing with a primal threat. I trust you now begin to see why. The recent incidents all share a common trait, meticulous planning. Such elaborate designs are a new development and one which fills me with an unshakable sense of foreboding. While I share your concern, my presiding feeling is one of relief at your safe return. Ah, the immortal flames assured me that they will deal with the aftermath, so you need not concern yourself with that. We may rest easy for a time. I suggest you take full advantage of the respite, Ninoa. You may be sure it won't last long. Once the people learn the identity of the hero who felled Ifrit, I fear you will have nary a moment to yourself. Whether she intended to or not, Minfilia neglected to tell you something. Something I think it would be best you heard from one of us. It concerns the temperate abductees that were rescued. I am sorry to report that all are to be put to death, the flames with whom you were imprisoned included. Needless to say, this information must not be made known to the public. I swear to you that we would not do this if there were any other recourse. But once a man is tempered, he is tempered for life. His very existence lends strength to the primal, whom he cannot choose but worship. I understand why they do this, but it still seems rather extreme. And so we scions continue our fight, that no more innocents need be sacrificed. I hope that you will continue to stand with us, Nina. But I should be going. I must offer my apologies to the Flame General for the losses his people suffered. Till next time. Well, that's a rather bittersweet goodbye. Gods, forgive me. How many more lives? Louisa would never have allowed this to happen. I have to do better. I have to be stronger. <sighs> That's a rather sad ending to this mini arc. So here Minfilia has a new next MSQ, but we will do that in the next video, actually. But here we are already past the two hour mark, so um, I will stop the video here. Just the time to return to Ulda and find an in room.
All right, and as promised, it's been a pretty eventful day. And we also had our very first trial uh, with a lot more to come where that came from. We will also encounter a harder difficulty level later on in our journey. So although this one was very easy, it's good to see these patterns and put that knowledge to good use when we go to the harder modes. Next time, we will resume the MSQ exactly where we left it. It's going to be a quieter day at the office though. Until then, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye bye.